I think I have said this multiple times already. Yeah, actually, in my previous videos, I have mentioned that the world population is estimated to be nearly 10 billion in 2015. And according to the United Nations, 70% of that will be living in a city. That population growth and mass migration of people to the city with more challenges, particularly feeding every mouth without destroying what's left behind. Do you think we are ready for the future? Well, I think so. Hi, my name is B-Boy and welcome back to another episode of B-Boy Explores where we explore things that matter today. In today's episode, we will be talking about the vertical farming. Challenges of the additional farming The conventional way of growing crops is not really that efficient and it uses a staggering amount of fresh water. Don't you know that of all the fresh water consumed in the whole world each year? 70% is dedicated just to grow crops. Also, the amount of land required to grow food we consume each year is insanely large. Now, I think we're sort of running out of space available, isn't it? We already cut a lot of forest and plowed more grassland to make room for more farms. In fact, as of now, we already cleared an area that is roughly the site of South America, to grow crops that we consume across the world. And the total land area dedicated for livestock is roughly the size of the entire continent of Africa. In addition to that, arable land is now quickly disappearing, which could be attributed primarily due to effects of climate change, overfarming, and soil erosion. This led to the loss of one third of all arable land across the world over the last four years. Therefore, expanding of farmland for growing crops is simply not an option. COVID-19 effect on food supply chain. In 2020, COVID-19 has started to disrupt our food system, motivating discussions about moving from dependence on long food supply channels towards shorter local supply channels. Increasing number of COVID-19 cases resulted in many individuals to spend more time at home due to repeated lockdowns and work-from-home setups, which led people to have interest in adopting urban farming practices. And one of that is vertical farming. What is vertical farming? According to Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations, or FAO, Philippine agricultural system is one of the most vulnerable in the world. As a disaster-prone country, food security definitely is of great concern. With this ever-increasing concern in food security, Philippine government has been making an active effort to employ urban agricultural tools for the benefits of Filipino people. One of the solutions to improve the food security, which is being promoted also here in the Philippines, is vertical farming. It has been introduced online or even offline, as well as it's one of the most favorite topics of YouTube videos, YouTube bloggers, who features emerging technologies in agriculture for several years now. In fact, Senator Francis Pangilinan has filed Senate Bill 257 or the Urban Agriculture and Vertical Farming Act of 2019. Senate Bill 257 mandates national and local government units to use idle government lots and buildings, including in state universities and colleges, for growing crops, raising livestock, and producing food using methods in urban agriculture and vertical farming. Vertical farming is a practice or an innovation of growing crops apart instead of growing outdoor or growing your crops in the traditional way. Vertical farming typically happens in vertically stacked layers integrated in a common structure like buildings, shipping containers, or repurposed warehouses and even a garage or unused areas at home no matter how small it is. This new practice of farming has already been receiving some major successes 
from early adopters and new companies across the world. This technology's key components includes physical layout to make greater use of the space available. This could be in a horizontal plane that are stacked vertically or vertical plane stretching upwards. Another key component is lighting, as vertical farming is most often done in areas with no to little natural lighting. Emitting the required electromagnetic spectrum from a light source is necessary to stimulate growth of plants required for photosynthesis to occur. This is done by the use of LED light. Based on several studies, blue and red lights can cause the plant to grow at its best. However, if your vertical farming setup is outside with full sunlight, I think LED lights are not really necessary. Actually, I have seen a lot of vertical farming setup that doesn't use LED lights. Although I have to admit that LED lights can could maximize your crop production. Yeah. Growing medium is also a key component to deliver nutrients to plant. It could be one of these three options. Crops are submerged in a nutrient-rich water solution. Or Crops are sprayed with a nutrient-based mist. Or, crops are submerged in a nutrient-rich waste water from an aquatic animal. This way of farming could incur higher energy costs due to large amount of artificial lighting required and other operations. However, this could be offset through the incorporation of sustainable features such as rainwater tanks, wind turbines, solar panel, and other clean energy alternatives. This vertical formula really works. Well, let's hurry it again. There are several types of vertical farming that are already available in the market today or has been developed in urban areas all over the world. The first large-scale operation of vertical farming was opened in 2011 at a facility in Singapore called Sky Greens. In the last couple of years, vertical farming has started to grow rapidly. In fact, in the Philippines, some small-scale farmers have started vertical farming. Amusing though, some of these farmers just accidentally became farmers because of the pandemic. Well, I know how it feels, I guess everyone, being stuck at home with few things left to do. It happened when they suddenly realized satisfaction doing agriculture while stuck at the comfort of their homes. I'm one of them actually. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I graduated with a degree related to agriculture. Unfortunately though, I didn't use it because a decade ago, before I worked in IT, I didn't see the significance of agriculture. Not until 2018 when I came to realize the challenges we had in food production. There are also companies who have started to explore vertical farming, moving the farm production near their customers. Crops commonly used in vertical farming are basil, coriander or cilantro, spinach, arugula, kale, lettuce. Some companies are working hard to include fruits and other vegetables in their production. Types of vertical farming based on the growing medium. Hydrophonics. Hydrophonics is the most commonly used vertical farming setup. Since this is growing of plants without soil, Plant roots are submerged in a liquid solution instead, containing all the nutrients they need, including nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Because there is no soil, herbicides is not needed anymore. Growing spaces can be sealed from pest entry as well. Thus, we can eliminate the use of toxic pesticides. The plants can be grown in trays or pipes that can be stuck up where you can use LED lights to shine down on a specific period of time. Aerophonics, gaining some traction in the industry which originally developed by NASA as a way of growing plants in space is aerophonics. This is similar to hydrophonics, but instead of using nutrient-rich liquid solution, nutrients are being sprayed as a mist into air chamber where plant roots are suspended. Aquaphonics, aquaphonics combines hydrophonics with fish farming or aquaculture. In this vertical farming setup, Nutrients come from nutrient-rich wastewater produced by fish. It gets filtered and treated to convert the ammonia in the wastewater solution into nitrates that the plant can use. 
As the plant absorbs the nutrient in the water, the plants purify it so it can be fed back to fish pond. This is how the water being recycled in aquaponic setup. Benefits of vertical farming Most of the food that we eat today is likely have been delivered in long distances via sea, air, road, and rail, all of which adds to the burden of carbon dioxide emissions into our atmosphere. Thus, if we grow that reduced indoors or in buildings instead, with a small carbon footprint, would be really an outstanding idea. Other than that, the benefits of vertical farming includes Reduce land and water usage. The process is reliable compared to traditional agriculture. There's no seasonality, so you get consistent crop production all year round. Vastly reduced harvesting time. Does not compromise flavor or quality. Not labor intensive. Does not require huge agricultural machinery to produce crops. Unfortunately, although it offers Many benefits, it also has disadvantages. Disadvantages of vertical farming Setup costs could be very expensive. But right now, some of the technologies used in vertical farming such as LED light has come down dramatically, while efficiency has greatly increased as well as its useful time. Requires huge amount of electricity provide all those ultraviolet lights and great deal of power to run the entire system that when fossil fuel is used could add up to the carbon footprint or emission of greenhouse gases. However, as I mentioned, this could be offset by the use of solar panels and other clean energy alternatives. Or maybe, only just maybe, if we can all be creative and resourceful in making our own vertical farming setup, then maybe this is not really a big issue. Just like what you can see here, isn't it? Vertical farming can be a favorable way for ensuring food security, not just here in the Philippines but all over the world, especially those countries who also have food security concerns. All the other countries, like countries in Europe, USA, Japan, and Singapore, have already implemented vertical farming. We still have a long way to go. Government support, yes, it could attract city dwellers but not everyone, especially those who live in rural communities. I think everyone feels how it's getting harder to live each day, but still a good thing that we started to do something for ourselves to combat the challenges associated with rapid increase in population, climate change, as well as the threat of COVID-19 and other major causes of food insecurities. It's hard, yes, but definitely it's not impossible to try.